Hello, my name is Paul C. Dwyer, Security GRC and Cybercrime Advisor. Today we look at DDoS attacks and the motivation behind these sort of attacks. Firstly, what is a DDoS attack? Well, a denial of service DOS attack or a distributed denial of service attack, DDoS attack, is an attempt to make a computer resource unavailable to its intended users. Let's look at a typical type of uh, DDoS attack. Well, firstly, the, the main uh, actor involved in this is what's known as the uh, bot herder, uh, or often known as a bot pimp. This is the individual who's responsible for controlling the network of infected computers and being able to use those computers to, to his or her aim. Uh, what they'll have is a command and control server, and that's a server they use to send out messages to control the infected machines. They normally communicate with this server via a number of proxy servers in order to disguise their identity and any chance of being uh, instigated in a crime. If we look at a typical scenario where somebody will have a website uh, on the internet, they tend to have you know a good connection, say a good strong 100 meg pipe uh, through to the good users and, and everything is okay on that basis. Uh, along comes something like a botnet of infected computers which are under the, the control of the command and control server uh, and the botnet herder and they will instigate an attack which will be of massive bandwidth, generally anywhere in the region of 3 to 20 gigabytes, effectively making your site unavailable on the internet to the good users. Okay, so let's look at the motivation behind these sorts of attacks. Well, firstly, revenge. Revenge is, is one of the oldest motivation factors behind these types of attack, going back to uh, IRC type uh, DDoS attacks, uh, where they, they were uh, simply uh, petty disputes and squabbles that were set to knock people offline. Uh, the next is in relation to demonstration. Uh, botnets can be hired and sold, and demonstration is also a factor in relation to demonstrating the size and power of these uh, botnets and Often sites are picked at random, motive, uh, without motive, a site may be taken off the web uh, in order to just demonstrate the size and power of a botnet to a potential buyer or renter. Next we have extortion, which is a favoured um, crime of the, of the Russian uh, cyber criminals. And in this sort of scenario, what they'll do is they'll tend to go after e-commerce sites or gambling sites, um, that, that uh, le I should say legal gambling sites, um, that they will uh, try and extort money out of and say that they will take them off the air, so to speak, unless they get paid tens of thousands of dollars. Interestingly, uh, when any of these criminals have been caught in interview, they often say that they would have moved on to the next particular victim if somebody hadn't have responded to them. So so the advice here is probably don't respond to these people and they will move on and try and open dialogue with, with somebody else. Next we have political. Political motivation going right back to the Balkans is, is well documented in relation to cyber warfare and where DDoS has been used to take out political opponents, even uh, uh, regions and countries and even uh, recently when you see viruses such as Stuxnet and so on. You will see that a lot of this uh, type of, of uh, uh, cyber warfare, uh, cyber criminality is uh, uh, based around particular regions or, or uh, political motivation behind it. Okay, collateral damage is also motivation behind attacks or reason behind attacks because uh, because of the topology of the internet um, where you may have thousands of websites behind one IP address or behind one connectivity uh, sch scheme. Um, if that scheme or, or that IP address is under attack, it may effectively wipe out thousands uh, of users. Users, uh, which were not part of an initial attack. So you may find that lots of sites get knocked out in a particular hosting company when they weren't uh, the initial uh, target uh, of the criminals. Uh, next we have competitive advantage. This is where a competitor may hire a DDoS uh, attack and uh, try and take out a competitor in order to win the business, uh, uh, the online business, uh, or any potential customers may come along and cause embarrassment to their competitors. Uh, the next is a combination uh, attack. This is uh, theoretically where they'll use a combination of techniques including DDoS to maybe inhibit first time responders to uh, uh, more kinetic type attacks such as bombs and so on. Um, but what I've seen, I've seen DDoS attacks involved in, for example, combination scams, uh, perhaps around things like pump and dump scams, where they'll put out rumors a particular organization is, uh, organization is out of business. They'll then do a DDoS attack on that site. The website will not be available. This will uh, fuel the rumor mill. Share prices will, will plummet. And of course, the criminals already have a number of shares in that company, future sold at a lower price to make a, a profit. Finally, we have hacktivism, and this has been recently in the news around WikiLeaks, uh, where you'll see that a number of people, uh, uh, mainly behind the, the anonymous group, will make software available or DDoS tools with a graphic user interface available to attack particular sites that they just don't agree with. So, for example, MasterCard, PayPal, Visa, and so on, were all attacked because they wouldn't uh, receive payments um, for the WikiLeaks. 
Okay, I hope you found this uh, video uh, enjoyable and useful. And if you'd like to know further information, please don't hesitate to visit pulseatwire.com or contact me via any of the methods uh, displayed here. Thank you very much.